Dun, dun, dun. I did that yesterday before my talk. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do it. Yeah. Do some like air boxing, it works. Take one, Mark. Hey, all you Firebase developers. Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm Jen Person, developer advocate, and today I am joined by Shobit Chug. So talk about what it is that you do for Firebase. So I do a very exciting job. I'm a product manager for Firebase Crash Analytics and for our integrations. Uh, that's really great. I know that uh, we had so many uh, people that might be newer to Firebase that were big fans of Fabric mm -hmm. and are really eager to see how Crash Analytics is fully incorporated into Firebase. Awesome. So I have gathered some questions about Crash Analytics, and I'm hoping you can help me answer them. I will try. All right, let's do this. Tony89 wants to know, I want to upgrade the latest version of our Android application to use Crashlytics. However, an older version of the app is using uh, crash reporting. Hmm. Uh, is it possible for them to upgrade to Crashlytics, and is this going to break crash reporting on their older version of the application? So uh, they can absolutely upgrade. In fact, we encourage people to upgrade as soon as possible so that as your app rolls out, all of the devices are now reporting to Crashlytics rather than to Firebase crash reporting. After September 9th, there will be no access to the Firebase crash reporting console. There might be some old devices that would never upgrade their apps, and unfortunately, they will not report to Crashlytics. So that is why I encourage you to upgrade as soon as possible. OK, so that's a really good call out there. Um, from September 9th onwards, uh, crash reporting is going to be fully retired. So the short answer is yes, you can uh, upgrade to Crashlytics, and you should. Yep. Welcome aboard. Check out our docs. We'll link below so that you can check out how to upgrade. OK, what do I have here? Cutico Live asks, what happens when different app variants use Crashlytics? If each variant has its own Google services JSON, um, what, what happens there? The way we treat variants is each variant appears as a separate Firebase app. So go ahead, use Crashlytics for all of them. What we do recommend is that you build and run each variant. That way, we know that that version of the app has started reporting data to Firebase Crashlytics. And you can see it in the console, just like any other Firebase app. Cool. Very good to know. Thank you. Oh, Javier, my man. <laughs> Javier says so. No. OK. It's like I picked all of the questions like just to trip myself up. <laughs> Javier wants to know if someone knows if he can disable mailing for Crashlytics. Absolutely. So at the bottom of every email you get is a link to alert settings. You can go there. And you can do a whole bunch of things. So one, you can disable all emails. You can disable selective emails. So for example, you might be getting a lot of emails related to new issues. So you might want to just disable that, but keep regressed issues and velocity alerts on. Also, I would encourage you to check out our integrations with Slack and Jira. Sometimes it's more appropriate to send these issues to, for example, a common Slack room that your team uses so that everybody can get them without getting individual emails. That's a good alternative to using email alerts. Great, that's a very good call out. So you can shut all email off. You can have select emails. Right. Um, I love the call out of uh, routing to Slack or Jira so that you can really, instead of just you getting the emails, anyone who on your team who that's relevant to is yeah. going to get them. Include your team. Uh, Bellin brought up this question. Mm -hmm. um, they said, I'm using Crashlytics for Firebase, and the crash reports are being uploaded fine to the Crashlytics console. Now, my intention is to upload a crash report only if the user consents to do so. For that, I want to show the report to the user and ask if they want to send it. I want to do that with every crash that occurs. Is that something that's possible? Right. So you can absolutely do that. The, the way to do this is you do a custom uncaught exception handler. You initialize Crashlytics just as usual. Now, when you invocate the uncaught exception method, there you can check if the user has given permission. Maybe you want to show the crash to the user then and ask them for permission. I would recommend a slightly different approach, which is maybe at startup time or when the first time a crash occurs, ask the user if they just want to send every crash over. Very often, people would just want you to do that and not see every crash. Store the bit, and then you can send crashes directly to Crashlytics without checking each time. But you can absolutely 
you know, using this method and we'll post a link, check if the user has given permission and send crashes only then. Great, that's a really great call out. And I thought that was a really good point, especially these days when it comes to uh, people sharing their information. Right. Um, that is a really good call out. And I agree, I, I don't know about you, but I have certain applications on my computer that crash more than others. Mm -hmm. And after the first time, I'm just like, I cross Lisa. it out. I'm like, I don't even want to, I don't yeah. even want to know. I don't yeah. want to talk about it. Right. So like, that's a good call out just to have them opt in once. So Prasanna Boppy asks, how many apps, whether it's iOS, Android, or web, can we add to a single Firebase project? The short answer is there is no limit to the number of apps you can add. Um, however, if you are adding multiple apps, if you are getting to the point where you think you might be hitting some kind of limit, that's a good time to stop and reflect on what, what are we doing with these applications and why are they required? Right. Um, if you're in some kind of, let's say, uh, contract or vendor situation where you might have, uh, you might be making different applications for different vendors, that's probably a better uh, opportunity to have separate projects. Because right. again, whenever you have some sort of data security questions, it would be so much easier just to have that siloed in a separate database so you don't have to worry about setting up the perfect uh, database rules to prevent uh, the wrong information from going to the wrong application. So yes, there there is no hard limit on that, mm -hmm. but um, ask why you might need more apps and see if that's really the best solution for you. Yeah, yeah that, that's a great answer, especially as it relates to security. It's important. Right. Yeah. What what kind of uh, data are you getting from this? What kind of analytics are you getting? Are they going to make sense if you have a whole bunch of applications? Right. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on the show and answering some questions about Crashlytics. Oh, my pleasure. I totally loved it. Yeah, I learned so much. And thank all of you for submitting your questions. Please keep them coming our way. It's the main key. We like cannot do the show if you don't keep giving us questions. So make sure you post those questions with the hashtag Ask Firebase. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to like, subscribe to the channel to check out other cool content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on a future episode. Bye. So there's uh, these chocolate covered almonds that are just absolutely amazing. They're the best thing ever. Oh, that's, that's a really good one, but I definitely enjoy banana chips.